Whoa, no pressure or anything. <laughs> no pressure. Oh my God, where's the SWAT guy? There isn't anything that says that you are legally not able to care for your own family member. of the active shooter situation in Grey's Anatomy. So without further ado, let's jump right back into this code silver, as I've learned from you guys in the comments, situation. I think you love Christina and I think you love me too. And I, I don't think that I would be talking about this if this was a situation going on in my hands. I, I just don't think that would be feasible. Hold on, okay, hold on. I love you. Please don't die. Get out of here, Meredith. Tell him about the baby. Come on. Oh my God, I cannot stand this girl. She is so annoying. Do we like her? I don't know. I don't like her. SWAT team? SWAT team, they didn't show the gunshot, so it SWAT got him, I bet. I love you. I'm guessing the three of them, I mean, there's like a love triangle going on. Oh my god. Where's the SWAT guy? There are only children here. Images. Take them and go. After she helps them. Sometimes people feel better just after she walks in the room because she has got this super magic smile. Yeah, okay, so I take a little bit of issue with the fact that they're trying to develop, like character development in this is a little bit weird and strange. Yeah, I, I don't know. It just seems a little disingenuous. I just don't think that uh, solving everyone's relationship problems is gonna be the order of the day. <laughs> not gonna die. Good. Cause that would be the worst part. When are you gonna tell him you're pregnant? <laughs> Sorry. April, in the OR behind me, there are two OR nurses and an anesthesiologist. Anesthesiologist. Tell him to set up for a cardiac procedure. What? Christina, yay! He's gonna operate. Whoa, no pressure or anything. No pressure. Operate on the chief of surgery as his in extremis. Or even if she looks like she's gonna get up to take a peek, I want you to stop her, okay? I don't care how, you stop her. This brings up an important point. So when doctors have their family members on the table, you really shouldn't be involved in their care. There isn't anything that says that you are legally not able to care for your own family member, but it is highly, highly, highly discouraged here in America and the boards of medicine, all well, the state um, medical boards caution against it unless it is an extreme emergency, like AKA pa patient is dying who is your family member and you are the only person who can help them. We have had instances that have been very questionable um, in my career where I have seen surgeons who wanna operate on their wife, spouse, husband, child, and basically the hospital um, usually that gets notified by a charge nurse or something when they kind of figure that out before it happens and the ethics committee or the eth hospital ethicist will say, no, you're not allowed to do that here. It doesn't happen very often where someone tries to, to pass that off, but when it does, it's not allowed usually. I'm searching 150,000 square feet of That's hospital. That's how it works. Just don't worry. He's not getting out of there. Casey. Yes, sir. Dr. Weber. Well, he's right. Dr. Weber's gonna go inside the hospital, isn't he? I need you to 
How is everyone like accessing this hospital when it's supposed to be barricaded off? Chest tube, he's got three liters of LR, two units of packed cells. All right, let's get him into the end. Okay, what does that mean? So they pay, place a chest tube, so that's when they place a... A chest tube is a very thick plastic tube that they place between the uh, ribs and the muscles that um, hold the ribs together, right in the side, kind of underneath your armpit. And what that does is it, it allows uh, air or blood to escape from the chest cavity that shouldn't be there. So the reason why it shouldn't be there is because the chest cavity is actually a negative space. It doesn't have any air. It isn't supposed to have any air between your lungs and the chest wall. So when there's air in there, it tends to push against the lung, which collapses the lung. The lung depends on that kind of vacuum that it's in. And if blood accumulates in there, it kind of has the same effect on the lung where it's compressing the lung. And you also get concerned that there's this massive bleed out and you can't see it. And they end up dying because they're just losing a whole lot of blood in their chest cavity. So I'm sorry about this clip somehow just stopped recording on me, so I had to um, voice this over, but that's the difference between a pneumothorax and a hemothorax. So pneumo meaning air, thorax meaning the thoracic cavity, and hemothorax, heme means blood, blood in the chest cavity. Additionally, they talk about packed cells. Now, what does packed cells mean? This means that red blood cells are fractionated or separated from the whole blood that you donate when you, when you give blood. So when you give blood, your blood is actually separated into three specific components. Packed red blood cells, which is kind of the main life-giving hanging blood that you see in uh, these types of medical dramas, but they also get separated into frozen plasma. The plasma component is actually flash freezed and then thawed when you need to give it to a patient, and that's typically a yellow appearance. And then even smaller component of that is cryoprecipitate. This process was invented by one person with the last name Cohn, who uh, in wartime figured out that blood products could be given more sparingly and blood could go a lot farther if it was given in these components instead of directly receiving a transfusion of whole blood. I'm gonna be with you the whole time. You are not alone, you hear me? I'll assess first and if she needs me then I'll scrub in. Uh, Christina was right, you should stay down there. Owen. I'm here. Owen. Hey, whoa, hold on. Talk to me. Stop fixing you. Oh, oh my god. There oh my god, I did not expect this. Okay, I'm just gonna propose a nice little plot twist here. Anesthesiologist, invisible, right? We all know that. Anesthesiologists have this magical superpower. They're invisible, especially in medical dramas. So what we can do is actually just drop some succinylcholine, get a hypodermic needle, sneak up behind him, shoot him with the succinylcholine, he'll be paralyzed, he's completely taken out. I, I, know, I know many an anesthesiology resident in my day who in the uh, sketchiness of like urban medical centers has considered carrying a syringe of succinylcholine and a needle as a defense weapon <laughs> because you can stick someone, inject it, and they get paralyzed temporarily, so. I didn't come here for this. My wife is dead. She, she's pregnant. You wouldn't shoot a woman who's pregnant. No, no. Seconds, his heart is gonna pump all the blood into his chest and stop beating. You'll see it on the monitor, just wait. Is he gonna fake his death? Don't stop. Shut up! Ooh. Are they rigging the monitor? I sincerely hope the anesthesiologist had everything to do with this. <laughs> Slowly take off the EKGs, take off the pole socks. That's what I would do. Make him look dead. He's not really dead. The anesthesiologist has everything to do with this. But they're invisible, so you can't see them. Get back to it. Get back to it. Give me a floral pledge of suture. Oh, he can't Let's go! Oh no. She's I'm okay. Oh, 
okay. But there's blood spreading down your thighs. I'm having a miscarriage. The drink is because... This is making me so nervous. What's going on with my hair? I only have one bullet left. Where is the anesthesiologist? Uh-oh. B-fib. B-fib. Paddles. Oh, no. Give me the internal paddles. paddles. Give me one of that, people. That's an appropriate dose. Okay, so what they're doing right now is shocking the heart from a life-threatening rhythm, which is called ventricular fibrillation, which is where the word defibrillator comes from. So when you see those, when you're walking at the mall and you see them on the wall and there's like a big red cross on them, and it's like a box, that's an automated external defibrillator. That's external, meaning the pads go on the chest and it sends an electrical shock to the body that passes through the heart, discharges, kind of resets it, if you will, usually if it's a large enough dose. Um, so that's a different voltage that you're gonna need, or joules, I should say. That's an energy that you're gonna need that's different to get through all the chest wall and everything. Then there are internal paddles, and that's what they use for open cardiac surgery. And you can just place these little paddles that have um, buttons on them, and they're, they're insulated, but then the, the actual little spoon-like portion on each is metal, and you put them on the heart, and boom, and you can shock them. And you use a much lower um, joules amount um, because it's directly on the heart. They're also doing intracardiac epinephrine, which is like when you're really like in dire straits. Um, I've only seen that given a couple of times, and it was in, a, in, it was in traumas, actually, and they were open traumas and uh, cardiac. I think that was a nice little kind of conclusion to the series. I think that the previous episode was a little bit more exciting, but at least we talked a little bit about intracardiac epi. We talked a little bit about uh, defibrillation. We've talked about chest tubes, hemothorax, pneumothorax. I'm exhausted, like just watching this episode. I don't know how you Grey's fans do this. Like, I teared up in the middle of it when Percy died. I don't even know that kid. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, smash that like button. If you are new, consider subscribing. I make videos like this every single week. I also make lifestyle vlogs. I also make um, like shopping tips and, uh, and hacks and Amazon favorites and all sorts of good stuff like that. So if you are at all interested in anything that I have to offer, just check out my channel and feel free to subscribe if you're interested. I would love to have you back. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Anesthesiologist Reacts. Check out at the end of this screen, you'll see a playlist full of other Anesthesiologist Reacts videos in case you've missed any of my previous ones. And I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for your time. Bye.